All right, so today is a Thanksgiving special. Thanks to everybody that supported the channel in the past 10 months or however long I've had the channel for. It's been a lot of fun. I appreciate all of you guys. So I do want to give back and show you my entire guide on how to power shrug. This is how I personally like to do it and how I've made the most gains doing it. So a few considerations to get to and a few things to understand before I actually get into the full technique breakdown, which you will see later in the video. I'm cool if you want to go skip to that, but I do think this is important. Obviously, that's why I'm including it in the video. So a complete guide to power shrugs. The first question I want to ask is why power shrugs versus regular shrugs? This is a common question. The reason that you want to do power shrugs instead of regular shrugs, or at least consider doing that, is because the concentric versus the eccentric in this lift, in a regular standard shrug without any power or any cheating, is very skewed and it's very lopsided. You're, you're going to notice that you have a hard time actually contracting, and your ability to hold the weight there and lower it down is probably 10 times as strong as your ability to just contract. That's going to cut out a big portion of the benefit of the lift. When it comes to most lifts, the negative controlling that and the weighted stretch and bouncing back up from the weighted stretch is going to be key to hypertrophy. Contracting is great and you do have to go through a full range of motion, but most experienced lifters and even some of the science is starting to show now that training a muscle in a stretched or a lengthened position and having maximum tension in that position is going to be key to hypertrophy. So it's very important that we're actually getting a solid negative with enough tension to challenge and grow that target muscle. And in this case, obviously, it's going to be the upper traps. So we have to compensate for that skewed uh, skewed strength curve in a shrug by including some leg and hip drive. Another thing here is going to be the reason why we want to do power shrugs is, is the weighted stretch. So you hear this all the time from power lifters and from people that are minimalistic. Deadlifts are all you need for traps. And there's a grain of truth to it, but they're missing out on a, a simple fix that actually gives them twice as many trap gains. They talk about the weighted stretch. I'm of the belief that a weighted stretch is going to be key, and I would personally bet more money that someone that deadlifts just as much as someone does a strict barbell shrug. I would say the person that deadlifts probably builds more muscle in their traps, but at the same time, neither of them are going to get good results, or they'll get good results, but they're going to be far away from the best you could possibly get. And the hack with this is to kind of combine the, the benefits and the values of the two. So a regular shrug, it gives you a good full range of motion. A deadlift, it doesn't give you the range of motion at all, actually. It's a complete isometric for your upper traps, but it gives you a very heavy weighted stretch, which applies a ton of tension to the traps. So the power shrug is essentially a combination between the two that gives you the benefits of both, which is what we're searching for when we're training for hypertrophy. So this is going to be key, and this is something that is a huge value factor of a power shrug. And I can't help but wonder, and this is just where my brain goes, why is a lift like the power shrug so underrated? And this is going to be the case, not just for power shrugs, although that is going to be the example I use for a lot of lifts when it comes to hypertrophy. And the, the solution that I generally come to with this in my experience and as a lifter and in the community is that it does go for a lot of lifts, but it's because they're not easily standardized, aka compare that to the squat bench and deadlift where it's depth standards, lockout standards, etc. It's a full big range of motion with multiple joints. It's easy to tell where the lockout is and where the necessary depth and range of motion is. It's easy to standardize and it's easy to compete. It's easy to compare those lifts where a power shrug, it's a little bit more of a gray area. So there's a lack of social competition in a power shrug. And that's essentially the conclusion that I've come to on why it's so underrated. And this is something that we need to see past. If we want to get the biggest benefit from this lift, we have to sometimes go to these kind of hidden industry secret underrated lifts. And something like this, as, as much of a benefit as it actually has, and as much proof as we have of this lift working very well for some lifters, it's never going to be a big popular lift. Part of my goal with this channel is to provide you the tools to actually use and understand these lifts, and that's what this video is for. But with that being said, this lift is never going to replace a deadlift. It's never going to replace a bench or a squat. Those lifts are solidified and they're in the lifting industry. Power shrugs will never be that. They can be up there and we can popularize them, but they're never going to be 
a big three or a big five lift. It just isn't the case, and it never will be with a lift that isn't easily standardized, that has too many variations, which is what the power shrug is. So to find these hidden lifts, these hidden gem lifts in hypertrophy training, you have to see past the social, you have to look at the pros and cons of each lift, and you have to compete with yourself. Because if I'm competing with other people, I'm going to do the lifts that they're doing. If I'm competing with myself and I say, my traps are okay right now, I want to get them bigger, the power shrug is the logical answer. In a social and community setting, it isn't the most appealing lift. But to myself, when I'm competing in hypertrophy with myself, now it's it's a lift that makes the most sense for me. And now to get into kind of the nitty gritty here. So when it comes to power shrugs, there's two variations that I think are worthwhile. I do think one of them is better, but there's going to be the machine version, which in my opinion is by far the best version. And then there's the barbell version, which is still a great option, but let's be real here. The machine is definitely better for power shrugs. The problem with this is not that many people have access to it. Unless you go to a decent commercial gym, you probably won't have access to it. Or if you have a home gym with these lever arms, these actually basically replicate the machine. So you guys know me. I'm never going to be someone that's like, well, I could just talk about these barbell lifts because everyone has access to a barbell and that would get me the most views. I'm going to say, all right, well, maybe 25% of my audience has access to this equipment. If it's better, I'm just going to say it like it is. I'm going to tell you that machine is better, even if I get less views or less support for it. So I'm going to keep it real here. I don't really care about that. I'd rather just tell you guys the truth. The reason why I said the bar, why, the reason why I included the barbell in this is because it's worthwhile. It's a good lift. It's a great lift, actually. There's other variations, like if you're doing it on a cable or a dumbbell, there's reasons why I didn't include those. There's other variations that I don't think are worthwhile doing. So if I say it's a lift that's worthwhile doing, it is. If you don't have access to the machine, but you do have access to a barbell, don't sweat it. The barbell is still great. There's just a couple almost nitpicky things that make the barbell a little bit less advantageous than a machine. So let's dive into that real quick. With the, with the machine, the pros here, the biggest pro that I see is you're going to be able to use a neutral grip. This is going to be a lot more comfortable, especially when you get into heavier weights. It's a little bit easier on your joints too if you're prone to some joint uh, issues, aches and pains or anything like that. It's just, a, it's just a comfortable way to get a good stretch on your traps and you're very strong in a neutral gripped position. Another one is going to be the stability. You can lean a little bit forwards or backwards to manipulate where you feel it in your traps when you're using the machine. And you don't have to worry about falling falling forwards or falling backwards because you're not stabilizing the bar. The machine is almost stabilizing you. It's kind of backwards, but it works really well when you're training for hypertrophy. Another thing within that uh, kind of subcategory is going to be it's a better center of gravity. And that's primarily because one, it's a machine. So you can pick where you want and the machine will support you. And two, you have a neutral grip. So instead of having the bar right in front of you, pulling you down, especially the heavier you get, Having the weight go directly through your center of gravity is the most advantageous to apply the most tension to that given muscle. The biggest pro uh, that I actually, I, I do think this is the biggest benefit of machines actually is going to be the ability in the physical space to have knee drive within the given lift. So with a machine, there's no bar on your quads. You can drive your knees forwards and you can use that for your primary use of explosiveness rather than just your hips, which a barbell is going to kind of limit you to since there's a big, a big heavy barbell in front of you that doesn't really let your knees go forwards. The cons with the machine is that you are generally going to be pretty limited to just that neutral grip and your grip width is not very adjustable unless you have a, a super fancy machine. But in reality, most of us are pretty limited when it comes to uh, grip choices. So pronated, mixed, uh, obviously neutral grip, which is what most machines do, but also the grip width. So it's, you're never gonna find a machine that allows you to do a snatch grip. And if you do, it's, it's pretty rare. You're not gonna see that too often. When it comes to the barbells, the pros of barbells is you have multiple grip width options. So you can go shoulder width, you can go just outside shoulder width, you can do a snatch grip variation. These are all good variations that allow you to target different parts of your traps and just target them in different ways. So that's obviously a huge benefit to barbells that machines don't necessarily typically give to you. However, with the barbell, there are a few cons and these cons don't make the lift not worth doing. Like I stated before, I wanna make that very clear. Knee drive can be pretty awkward. 
like I said, if you're power shrugging, there's a barbell in front of you. Your knees don't have much space to go forwards. Another thing, another con with the barbells, you're limited to either a pronated or a mixed grip. The mixed grip, I wouldn't recommend on these. And when you're doing a pronated grip, that's all, that's all you can do. You can't do a neutral grip, which as I stated before, is going to be advantageous for this lift. Another one is the center of gravity starts to get funky as you go heavier on this lift. So with the barbell, it's always going to be in front of you and you're always going to have that forwards pull. And although this isn't going to be as extreme as other lifts, maybe like a curl, it is still going to get pretty awkward because when you get strong on this lift, like you're putting a lot of weight on the bar and that, that is just simply going to pull you forward, especially if you're like a 175 pound person and you're power shorting 500 pounds, that's still 500 pounds pulling you forwards over a long period of time during that set. So when it comes to setup, there's two considerations that you're definitely wanna, gonna wanna take into account. The first one's going to be straps. You don't wanna be limited by your grip here. This isn't a lift that's targeting your forearms. Your forearms are one-tenth of the strength of your traps. You want to go heavy. Don't limit yourself. Buy some straps that are like 10 bucks. Use these every time on this lift. The next thing you want to consider is going to be your stance. The most comfortable setup here is going to be between hip and shoulder width. Hips, you're going to have uh, a, not quite as much leverage and power as you want. Shoulder width can sometimes feel a little bit awkward. The best starting point that I would recommend to most of you guys, somewhere in that sweet spot right between hip and shoulder width this should be the most comfortable spot. So once you're here, get your straps on, load them up onto the machine or the barbell, and then you can just start power shrugging right from here. So when you're doing power shrugs, it's actually a multi-part movement. There's a few different steps you wanna take through to avoid the most common mistakes with this lift. So the first one's going to be starting off in an isometric hold. My biggest cue for this is it should feel like the lockout of a deadlift where everything's tight, you're just feeling the weighted stretch, the weight's resting, it's pulling on your traps. Another thing you want to focus on is bracing your core and your glutes. You want to have your weight spread evenly throughout your foot. Make sure you're in a strong, advantageous position. You don't just want to be kind of sitting here with a loose core, loose glutes. Stay tight, keep everything set up just like this, feel the weighted stretch. Part two, once you have your isometric and support down, the next thing you want to do is use double extension. So with this, you want to be extending your knees, and your hips. These are gonna be the most important things. With the machine, you're primarily gonna be using knee drive. A little bit of hip drive obviously is gonna be in there too, but bend slightly at your knees and you wanna come up explosively from here. So transfer that force from your knees directly into your traps and shrug just like that. So your knees and your hips is generating the right power to transfer into your traps so you can surpass what we're limited by, which is the actual concentric of our traps. And the next part to the lift, so once you've successfully executed your setup, once you've successfully executed your drive to get it up, you wanna have a control to negative and you want to actually let the weight pull you down. Let the weight get your full range of motion, let it get uh, the stretch on your traps. This is gonna be key. Once you're here, you actually wanna stop here and pause for a split second and you want to restart and reset for each rep you do. So once you go through a full rep, you pause right here, just like that. You reset between each rep. I'll get into some of the mistakes next. And then these are, the, these are gonna be the most common mistakes when you're doing power shrugs. The one that I see the most often is gonna be the nonstop reps. So this is basically doing everything right for the most part, except for the reset and the weighted stretch. So what this looks like is you just kinda go up and down like this. But the, the problem with this is you're not actually getting a full weighted stretch. You're rushing through the lift. You want each rep to be perfect like that. Feel the stretch, repeat, feel the stretch. Little pause at the bottom. You don't have to hold it here for like five seconds or anything, but get that stretch, get that pause and you should be good. The next biggest mistake I see is the use of triple extension. So. For my Olympic lifters, this is gonna be your mistake. And for everybody else, I'm assuming you might not know what triple extension is. That's gonna be the extension of your ankles as well as your knees and hips. So you do want to extend and use your knees and your hips, but when you start to use your ankles and you kind of calf raise up like that, you start to lose your balance and you lose your stability with not much extra benefit. Your knees and your hips are gonna be what actually gets the weight up on this lift. 
And then for the final common mistake, this is one that is primarily going to be seen in beginners. And the reason for that is because you're just not that strong yet, and you're still kind of building up your strength, you're still building up your muscle, so it's totally normal. The reason for this is you're just using a little bit lighter weight, and you're not into the heavier weights yet. So there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just easier to make this mistake. So what you'll see here is they'll kind of just stand here, not in a full weighted stretch. They're just at the bottom of the range of motion, but they're not actually letting the weight pull down like this. So you'll kind of just start like this and do your power shrugs, but you never actually go all the way down. Don't be afraid to let the weight pull you down and actually give you the full range of motion on your traps. So this one, I mean, somewhat nitpicky, but then again, it is pretty important because we are primarily doing this lift for the benefits of the negative and the weighted stretch. So just make sure the weight's pulling you down. It's not gonna feel comfortable, but it will get you big traps. All right, so for other considerations with the power shrug, the first one you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of, and especially for beginners on that last mistake, the last common mistake that I touched on about the full range of motion is it is gonna be a learning curve. And this is a lift that actually, when you increase weight, your technique will naturally improve. There's a few lifts. This is one of them where heavier weight actually makes your technique better. There's something like a bicep curl where you don't need heavy weight to get your technique and your form down. For a power shrug, this is something where the heavier weight actually fixes up your technique and forces you to do it right. So if you're not getting it right off the bat, that's totally fine. Just be patient, stick through the process, and I guarantee you it's going to happen. It happened to me, and look where I am now. I have big traps, and I have a big power shrug, and it works well. Another one you're going to want to take into consideration is the proximity to failure, and this is probably the almost like the elephant in the room with stuff like power shrugs. And the reality is, is that there's no, there's no hard point of failure because it's a, it's a heavy compound lift, but at the same time, you're not necessarily seeing what the technical failure is since the range of motion is simply just a gray area. You're never, it's not like when you're bench pressing and you've legit fail a rep and you can't get it up into the lockout, like that's two failure. With a power shrug, what's failure? 90% of the way up on the contraction, is that technical failure? I'm not sure. It's gonna be a tricky lift to take to muscular failure because it's so heavy and it's kind of a complex lift. So my advice to you is to push it hard until you kind of just have to give up or until you're winded. Something like this, you'd, I don't think you need to push it all the way to muscular failure since basically every rep you're doing here is going to be super effective since the weight's heavy and you're getting such a good range of motion. I would push it as hard as you can. You, you want to make sure that when you stop your set, you're not actually able to go up as high as you could on the first few reps. So push it hard. You don't have to go quite all the way until you're at muscular failure because you'll probably faint or pass out by then. Uh, it's just the nature of the lift. But then again, if you get 90% up and you're not like all the way at the top, that's definitely not far enough to failure. So this one's very individual. I don't have like a fancy little one RIR or anything like that for you. Uh, push it as hard as you can. Measure your results and make sure that it's working for you. If it's not working for you, maybe there's something wrong with your proximity to failure, your volume, your frequency, your form, technique, etc. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. I'll see you soon.